This bike looks cool. Oh, but wait. Are those disc brakes? Is that a one by drivetrain? That's not the vintage build I'm used to. Oh well, let's take it for a spin. Yeah, I don't have any flowy trails with snow-capped mountains in the background, so I'm going to ride it around this park. It sound right, boy. The bike in question is a 2016 Charge Cooker 1. Here's the stock configuration. It's a 27.5 inch wheel rigid aluminum mountain bike. There are a few small differences with mine. The 2.3 inch tires on these beefy rims are wider than anything else in my stable, but the bike originally came with even bigger plus size 2.8 inch tires. Also the bars were cut fairly narrow for a mountain bike and a quick release seat clamp was added. The bike was a very budget friendly $1300 when new. I think the compromises to stay at this price were made in the right places. I don't ride downhill or any technical trails, so Rigid Fork is about right for what I'll be using it for. And it keeps the weight down too. The bike doesn't have every modern convenience at this price, so things like dropper posts and through axles are some of what's left out. As a certifiable retro grouch, I love my V-brakes. They weigh next to nothing, they're cheap, and they're easy to set up and maintain. They offer plenty of stopping power, even though I know they get worse when wet. The cooker is set up with disc brakes, but at least they're hydraulic disc brakes which are stronger than the mechanical ones. I'd still rather have something easier to maintain if I was to rely on this bike for international travel or going around remote places, but for local rides though, it'll do. I could also have gone without the one by drivetrain, which chops some useful gears off at both ends. I realize it helps keep the cost down, and at least the stock chainring is only 32 teeth which helps at the lower end. I'd still like something lower than 32-36 tooth combination if I was riding somewhere super hilly. My last gripe with this bike is the lack of mounts. There are bottle cage mounts and some fender mounts on the fork, but nothing on the rear, and all that rigid fork real estate could have been used for something. All in all, the bike is super fun to ride. The geometry is very upright, the front end is considerably higher than any of my vintage mountain bikes of similar size, even with suspension. That's probably because the Cooker 1 uses the same frame dimensions as the other Cooker models which did come from front suspension. This makes for a comfortable ride, as do the thick tires which are set up tubeless. I was initially hesitant to adopt tubeless technology, but I love the extra grip and smoother ride they offer, besides the obvious added flat protection. They're also backwards compatible. If for whatever reason your tubeless setup fails, you can always put in a tube. So to answer the question in the title, yes I do really enjoy riding this bike, despite being a bit of a Luddite. I like the rigid fork, upright geometry, and huge tire clearance. The tubeless tire setup is newish technology that I'm totally on board with. Even though I don't love the disc brakes and the one by drivetrain, I do like the fact that the disc brakes are hydraulic and gear range skews lower rather than higher. Time to take on the biggest obstacles. handles roots, curbs, and mulch stacks very well. I guess this one's a keeper.